Hey everyone, welcome to The Daily Word. I'm, I'm really glad that you've joined me. And for our Daily Word today, we're in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. And what I'd like to do is share verses 8 to 15 with you. And then let's talk just for a few minutes today about the call of the Lord here to not tire of doing good. So if you would, hear the word of the Lord. We never accepted food from anyone without paying for it. We worked hard day and night, so we would not be a burden to any of you. We certainly had the right to ask you to feed us, but we wanted to give you an example to follow. Even while we were with you, we gave you this command. Those unwilling to work will not get to eat. Yet we hear some of you are living idle lives, refusing to work and meddling in other people's business. We command such people and urge them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to settle down and work to earn their own living. As for the rest of you, dear brothers and sisters, never get tired of doing good. Take note of those who refuse to obey what we say in this letter. Stay away from them so they will be ashamed. Don't think of them as enemies, but warn them as you would a brother or sister. Well, friends, it stands to reason that if Paul here is giving instruction and encouragement, listen, don't get tired of doing good. It stands to reason, of course, that there were some who were, well, getting tired of doing good. And for those who've been active in uh, the ministry of the church in various ways, uh, I think that we would have to admit that there are times and maybe even seasons where this has happened to us. Um, you know, at times it's just kind of a, of a natural fatigue, a, a physical or emotional kind of exhaustion. Uh, it, it might be that we haven't taken Jesus' example to go out alone and, and rest and pray in the presence of our Father. It, it might be like Moses that you know, we've, we've just simply taken on too much, more than, than one person can do. And, and what we really need to do is help other people to get involved. You remember this happened with the apostles also in uh, the book of Acts. We read about this. This is Acts 6, 2 to 7. So the 12 called a meeting of all the believers. They said, we apostles should spend our time teaching the word of God not running a food program. And so, brothers, select seven men who are well-respected and full of the Spirit and wisdom. We will give them this responsibility. Then the apostles can spend our time, we apostles can spend our time in prayer and teaching the Word. Everyone liked this idea and they chose the following. Stephen, a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit. Philip, Procurus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, an early, earlier convert to the Jewish faith. These seven were presented to the apostles who prayed for them as they laid their hands on them. So God's message continued to spread. The number of believers greatly increased in Jerusalem and many of the Jewish priests were converted too. So not only was the fatigue issue handled and there was disorganization there that got handled, But in fact, what we see is that by sharing the load, right, the church actually flourished. They continued to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, It could also be in our being tired in the work of ministry that that the Lord has us in a difficult season. and, And it's a season where the Lord is actually teaching us to depend on Him, to rely on Him. And And He is actually pushing us beyond our limits so that we do learn to rely on Him. And and so the goal is accomplished, but not only that, our faith grows and and God is glorified because it's so clear that that God did it. Um, We certainly could not. It was beyond what we could do, what we could endure. God accomplished it. Um, In this case, as we're looking at 2 Thessalonians 3, we see a, a different kind of, of weariness, um, which is a, a really difficult kind of weariness in ministry to deal with. And, 
And uh, it's difficult because you can't just go take a nap. You can't get out and just get some time alone with the Lord. Uh, those, those are good things. Um, remember, after all, Jesus napping in, in the boat on the Sea of Galilee when there was a great storm. Uh, this is difficult because you are weary, as we're seeing here, uh, because the people or the person that you're, in, you're ministering to is difficult, upset, ungrateful, ornery, just plain taking advantage. Some of the church family, it seems, are, are working hard. They're giving, they're serving one another. But then there are some who have noticed, well, my goodness, if I don't have food, I can just get it from these folks. I can do that instead of working. And then to make matters worse, as though that's not kind of not great, uh, they aren't just taking advantage um, uh, of those who are working and serving and giving. Because they are taking advantage, they don't have to work, and they have the time then to be critical of others, to get all in, in other people's business. And the, the attitude, the weariness, would sound something like this, at least internally, right? <laughs> you don't give, you don't serve, you take what you can get, and then you have the audacity to criticize and to get in other people's business. Not, you know, that I... <laughs> that I would know anything about this, certainly. So I want to ask you to, to notice, though, um, notice two things, if you would, please. First of all, that these folks, as, as ornery, as frustrating as they might be, that they are not to be treated as enemies, that they are to be corrected as brothers and sisters. In addition to that, uh, we, we have to remember, friends, that we ultimately serve Jesus. Uh, if we say, you know, this person frustrates me and, and they did this or they, they did that and, and they were ungrateful, they were this or that, and so I will stop doing good, then what we, what we have to realize is that ultimately we were doing good for ourselves. Because, you know, if you think about it, if the deciding factor of whether or not we're going to serve is the expression of gratitude from the folks that we're serving, then really we're serving to get that reaction. That, that is why we're serving, or, or else we would keep serving whether we got it or not. And so we, we have to orient our hearts, friends, to see that we are we are serving the Lord. We're serving not to get gratitude. We're serving to please Him. We're serving because we love Him. And, and so we have to see that our serving is about bringing joy to our Lord. And as we bring joy to the Lord, as we serve Him and please Him, as we bless the one who has done so much for us, we, we actually receive joy, an overflow of joy from the Lord. This is, this is something that I've noticed that is such a blessing to, to serve is that when, when you're offering your service to the Lord in love for Him um, and the people that He just loves so much that He gave His only begotten Son that, that it does bring joy to the Father. And you can actually... My goodness, you can feel the, the Holy Spirit uh, just, just like radiating the joy of the Father. And this, this is what we're doing it for, right? We're doing it for Him. We're doing it for His joy. And we get the overflow of the joy of the Father. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. And friends, till we have a chance to speak again, I pray that God would bless you and that He would keep you.